We are on the exhaust stroke. Now what's happening is the exhaust, of course, is being pushed out the exhaust here. We have this residual, ex these exhaust molecules left over in the cylinder here, all this burnt exhaust. The exhaust valves has started to close, but now the intake valve, oh, the exhaust system over here has an incredibly powerful draw, or at least it's supposed to. So the, the scavenging effect of the exhaust pulse is very powerful if the exhaust is designed right. Now, one of the things that can diminish this, and I see guys do this all the time, is they put too big of an exhaust on. Oh, I got a three inch exhaust, you know, on my 305 or whatever, you know, with a big long tube, with, with shorty headers and big tubes. Well, restriction to flow creates velocity over here. If your exhaust system is too big, it actually creates less draw on the exhaust side. Now, I'm not saying that bigger exhaust is not going to help your engine because generally the exhaust systems on the factory exhaust systems are generally very restrictive. So usually we can go a little bigger, but you don't want to go too big on your exhaust, especially if you have a smaller cubic inch motor, because that is going to diminish the amount of draw that you have here. If you don't believe me, um, uncork your pipes from your exhaust manifolds on your stock car and drive around with just exhaust manifolds you have no scavenging whatsoever and that thing's gonna run like dog poop. So the air fuel is drawn in by the exiting exhaust pulse or velocity and the incoming air and fuel that's coming in here helps to evacuate the exhaust, the residual exhaust out of the cylinder. So everything is moving from the intake over to the exhaust and this is before I've even gotten to my, this is before I've even gotten to my intake stroke. Now camshaft selection really has an effect on this because you can get a camshaft that has a lot more overlap. But if I get too big on my overlap and I am going to get a choppy idle with that, what that does is it moves the power band up higher. In other words, the camshaft is really not going to, if it, down there where that engine's running high, idling choppy, it's not going to really make any power, right? So overlap you gotta you gotta really consider this and the better flowing your head is the less overlap you need so really what we're trying to create here guys is we're tr we're trying to create cylinder pressure we're trying to build a lot of cylinder pressure well the bigger the overlap the more that the overlap event is going to interfere with the combustion process so at low RPMs, when this piston is moving relatively slow, if I have big overlap, it's going to bleed a lot of pressure out of that cylinder because the valves are open for so long here, right? And that's why the engine runs choppy because the valve opening during overlap is interfering with the combustion process and it causes low compression on the cylinder and it basically runs rough, right? So. Overlap is, is a thing and we need it for scavenging, but I would caution you, especially on the, the newer engines that have really good flowing heads, you don't need a gob of overlap. This is an old school thinking. I have a, I have a buddy named Larry and he is the most old school guy you've ever heard of. He hates electronics, he hates fuel injection, he thinks the new motors are terrible and he's he still likes the old camel hump Chevys and the 327s. Nothing against them. They're great motors. I'll probably never stop building the old classic small blocks or and big blocks. But the fact of the matter is, is that's really old technology. It it just the the, the heads are just absolute garbage. They are. The only thing that those old heads are good for anymore is a classic car restoration. They are, they just don't flow compared to what we have now and compared to aftermarket heads. So I want to caution you on overlap. You don't need a ton of overlap. Even though it sounds cool and it idles rough, you really got to watch that because you're losing cylinder pressure at low RPM and it kind of makes the engine run like a dog. I've, I've, I had a guy bring me a, a a big block Chevelle like last year and it had an LS swap in it. it had a Corvette LS motor in it and he had a big giant monster cam in it that was idling rough and and you know that car ran terrible it just did not run good 
we ended up doing a cam swap and we backed the cam way off and I think we probably gained 80 to 100 horsepower. Another issue that we have is exhaust valve opening. Exhaust valve opening. Okay, so exhaust valve opening is a little bit different. Now we have something, we have something called cylinder blowdown. Now the definition of cylinder blowdown is this. In a race engine, let's say you got like a pro stock or something, it's a naturally aspirated race engine. The goal with the engine builders, especially at high RPM, is to, so I've got these events, intake, compression, boom, power. So now I'm on my power stroke. My piston is on the power stroke. I'm on my way down. If I have a well-tuned exhaust system that scavenges the cylinder very, very well, I can open my exhaust valve a little bit earlier. When I'm about two-thirds of the way down the bore, let's say my top dead center point is here, my bottom dead center is here, I'm about two-thirds of the way down. Listen, the fire's out. The piston is simply traveling down from the inertia of the pressure that was exerted on it by the expanding gases when they ignited. So when I'm about two thirds of the way down the bore, I want to open my exhaust valve then. Because remember, the exhaust valve has an incredible draw. Now, we can increase the draw that the exhaust has by putting a better exhaust on. Headers do a very good job of increasing the draw on that cylinder. Here's the thing, I have burnt exhaust in here now. I want to evacuate as much of that burnt exhaust out of that cylinder as I can before the exhaust stroke starts, right? So I've got this exhaust pulse and I've got all of these header pipes that are scavenging and pulling on these exhaust ports. When I open that valve, those exhaust mo molecules are going to start to blast out that header tube, even while I'm still on my way down on the power stroke. Now, stock cams aren't very good at this. They usually open that valve too late or later than it should. And there's reasons for that, for emissions and, and all, there's all kinds of reasons for it the manufacturers, the engineers, I don't want to get into all that because honestly a lot of that stuff is like over my head. Um, this really is rocket science here. But we, uh, we do know that cylinder blowdown, so talk about the pro stock for a second. Pro stocks will have a hundred percent cylinder blowdown. What that means is the intake and exhaust systems are designed so well that from the point where the exhaust valve opens, and honestly, the exhaust valve probably opens a lot sooner than it does with a, with a street motor. From the point where the exhaust valve opens right here to bottom dead center, they will almost completely evacuate the entire cylinder using scavenging from the exhaust system. Now, this does a couple of things. Number one, it makes the engine produce a lot more power because Remember, these exhaust molecules in here, they are solid pieces of matter. They are a gas, right? But if you look at them at the molecular, molecular level, say that 10 times fast, they are actually physical pieces of matter or molecule. The more that is left in that cylinder after I start up on my exhaust stroke, the more pumping work the engine has to do to physically push that exhaust out. Hopefully that makes sense. So if I get a camshaft that opens this valve sooner rather than way down here like a stock cam, I'm going to start to scavenge that cylinder and I'm going to start to evacuate a lot more of that exhaust and that frees up horsepower because I don't have to physically pump it out. Now, this is highly dependent on a well-designed exhaust system. The length and diameter of the header pipes and header tubes is critical because the scavenging effect actually uses negative pressure waves. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. So when it comes to, here's your header pipe. So 
we're just going to look at one header pipe. I know this is really short. The header pipes are usually longer. But here's the thing. Every time there's an exhaust pulse in here, right? And remember, this is going really fast. This is happening, I mean, if you're doing 6,000 RPMs, you got 50, 50 exhaust strokes in one second on every cylinder. So that, that's, that's a, this thing is moving. That means the piston's going through the four stroke cycle 50 times per second. So you got all these exhaust pulses on this. So what happens is you get a shock wave. An exhaust pulse is a sound wave. It's a compression wave and it's basically moving at the speed of sound. So you got these pulses. Every time that comes up, there's a pulse that comes down here. Each one of these is an exhaust pulse. Now you get down here, when these exhaust pulses get to the collector where, all, where, where they expand, what happens is they hit the collector and they expand rapidly. Well, when they expand, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. We understand that. The expansion of that wave actually sends a negative pressure wave back up the header tube to the exhaust valve. So this thing expands here, boom! And now, We'll draw it down here. I have a negative pressure wave, and there's there's a bunch of waves, and they're traveling back and forth. They're reverberating from the collector to the valve. A well-tuned exhaust system is going to put this pressure wave. When this pressure wave comes in, your exhaust valve is closed here. What we want is we want that negative pressure wave to come back hit the exhaust valve, boom, and when it hits it, it bounces off and it goes back toward the collector. So this pressure wave is bouncing between the collector and the valve. Boom, 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 boom. And, and that's actually what you hear when the engine's running, when you got headers or whatever, you got loud exhaust. And you, what you hear is you hear all these pulses and the exhaust is going boom, 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 boom. Actually what you're hearing is you're hearing shock waves reverberating back and forth in that header. That's why it sounds that way. So what I want is I want my shock wave to come back from the collector, hit the valve, bounce off, and turn around and head back again. Once that shock wave hits the exhaust valve and bounces off, this shock wave has a lot of energy here. If I can tune my exhaust, right, and if I have a longer header tube, that means that it's going to take longer time for that shock wave to get from the collector back here, and that generally puts my shock wave back at the valve at a lower RPM. So it scavenges the cylinder better. This is why long tube headers work better at lower RPMs. They make more power because what I'm doing is I am using that shock wave. So let's say my shock wave came up, boom, it hits the valve, turns around, it's got all this energy now that's headed deflected back to the collector, and just as I do that, guess what my exhaust valve does? My exhaust valve opens. This is my exhaust valve opening event. At the same time down here, my piston is on its compression stroke and I have all this exhaust in here. That, listen, that compression wave has a lot of energy and that compression wave actually pulls very hard on that cylinder and it will do a very good job of scavenging that cylinder. So this is why the exhaust system, the header length, and the design of the headers is important. We call it a tuned exhaust system. The definition of a tuned exhaust system is the exhaust system is going to put the shock wave at the valve just before the valve opening, turn around and scavenge the cylinder in the RPM range where the cam is making its optimal power, right? It's only going to hit the valve and bounce off in a certain RPM range. It's either going to be really high if I have big short headers or it's going to be at a low RPM if I have smaller long tube headers. Getting these two events, now finding out exactly when that happens in a particular engine is difficult or what RPM range it is, but as a general rule, if you want your engine to run really good and you have a mild camshaft, like in a Tahoe or a Suburban or something, you want a long header. You want a smaller tube, long header. Small tube for more velocity, restriction to flow creates velocity. If I had a garden hose here, 
and I turn around and you were across the room and I went, ha, you know, and the water's running on the floor here, you wouldn't be worried about it. But if I take and I restrict the garden hose with my thumb, what happens in that hose is restriction to flow creates pressure. Pressure's gonna build up in that hose and now I got velocity and I'm gonna spray the guy across the room. The same thing happens in here. A smaller tube header is a restriction to flow. Now we don't want it too small because then it's gonna choke everything off. But we don't want this big giant header tube here because the problem is we don't have enough restriction to flow and the exhaust gases slow down. So we want the header tube diameter sized right. As a general rule, you got a big heavy vehicle, you want small tube headers. You want small long tubes because long tubes are gonna make the compression wave scavenge the cylinder or evacuate the cylinder better at lower RPMs. If you got a high RPM cam and you're running seven, 8,000 RPMs, you want a really short giant header on that thing like a race car. For most street cars, small tube, small long tube headers are gonna be the best choice because that's what that does is that puts my compression wave at the valve opening event pulling on the cylinder between about 2,500 and 35 to 4,000 RPMs, which is where 95% of the street cars are gonna run. There's a lot going on here, you guys, and opening that into valve earlier is gonna really be beneficial, especially if I have a tuned exhaust system. So those are the two events you really wanna think about. That's intake valve closing and exhaust valve opening.